All right. I am outputting my JPEGs to make my final animation. So from my stage, where, where are they saving? They're saving to my downloads folder. So I'm going to open up my downloads folder in my finder so I can see it, right? And I've done three of them so far. Notice they're all going to have the same name, but they're going to add numbers after them. And I like to, you got to keep it like this to the end, but at the end I'll name this number zero. So I'm going to keep going, open up the next layer, go to, to File, Export as, JPEG, Save. Next one, File, Export as, JPEG, Save. Why did we take all the time to move them over to the stage? It's so that we don't have to turn on multiple layers before saving each one. It can get really confusing. So this just organized them for us and allowed us to do quick animation tests just by using the eyeball. So right now I have one, two, three. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five in all. So this will be the sixth. One, two, three, four, five, six, right? So file, export as, JPEG, save. The reason I'm getting this little thing is just because I have an ad blocker on. Next one, file, export as, JPEG, save. Next one, file, export as, JPEG, save. So this is a, a boring step, but this is the, the price of the program being free. And this is still a whole lot easier and a lot easier to adapt than, than doing the programming language on the naming of the layers. Though if you're really into to type coding, you can always try that out. Just Google animate in Photopea. And I, I reminded you at the beginning, if you have an interest in animation, this will kind of test that interest because it really shows you how tedious some things can be in it and how repetitive. But it does give you a lot of kind of tight control. So it's just kind of a personality trait that animators have that I don't necessarily have. So I, I'm definitely more of an illustrator than an animator. The other thing I've noticed from my animator friends is that they love storytelling and acting and they'll keep a mirror next to their desk to try things out, you know, and try to imitate it. And those are things as an illustrator I don't do as much. So these are all different kind of specialized skill sets. This just gives you a taste. And because it's our introduction to animation, now that you kind of have seen the whole process and once you've gone through it, you can decide if you want to use it for your final project or not and animate. And you're not limited to freeware. We can use Adobe Photoshop to do this like I do in my morning class. And this step is unnecessary if we're animating in Photoshop. I do kind of like this step, though, for teaching it as an intro, because it, it really limits students' ambitions a bit, so that they don't just automatically want to do 90 or 100 frames. You have to be a little bit more efficient with it. Because students naturally, when you're starting out, you want it to look as professional as possible, which would require 24 frames per second, which is a whole lot of work for a project and not required for a GIF or for an animatic. And so if I required myself to do 24 frames of this per second, that would be many more than what I'm having to do here. Oh, 
almost there. All right, did them all. Save my stage file. I'm going to be returning to it, but right now I can close Photopea. And I can go to the, the easygift.com maker that's linked in the assignment. And that is here. Okay, so I need to drag these files in, but let's organize them first. So in my finder, I'm going to look at all these. One, two, three, four, five, right? The last one is blank, but that's actually my first one. So at the end of this, I'm going to put parentheses, zero parentheses. And if I'm arranging them in my finder by name, which is the default, which you can do up here, then I'll see them all in order. And it looks like a film strip. Ooh, look how nice. And if I'm on a Mac, I can select all of them and then double click and they'll open up in preview and I have 33 frames, and then there, there they are in order, in preview, and all I have to do is click on the down arrow, and I can animate them. Right. But that means I have to click through each one. So the whole reason of making a GIF animation means that you're programming the timing of each change into the file, and that's what that website helps us do. So now I'm going to take all those and because I am very organized when I'm trying to do animation, I'm going to make a folder that's called my test files, and I'm going to drag them all into that folder so they're no longer stuck in my downloads folder. And then they're all here in order. There's actually 33 of them. I'm going to select them all and then drag and drop them into this website window. And this, when this, when I first started teaching with this website, that didn't always work, but it's been better lately. So it used to be I had to import them one at a time, which is really annoying. <laughs> but again, it's the cost of freedom. Okay, so the default timing is five frames per second. And that's a delay of, of 20 milliseconds. So let's see what that looks like. Let's make a GIF. And then I might want to adjust the timing. So think of this as always your test animation. And honestly, I think that's pretty good. I don't know that I want to slow it down or speed it up too much. What I could do is I could extend this time when the book is glowing and he's happy because that seems to go by really quick, right? So how would I do that? I don't need to create any new assets. All I need to do is copy certain frames and play them again, right? like rearrange them and copy them. And I have the ability to do that. So let's see if we can find those frames when he's glowing and happy right here, starting here, ending here. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to copy it. And now I'm going to move them. So I'm just going to play it twice. I think I got those in the right order. Let's see if it matters. Now I'm going to output that GIF again, and I've just added extra frames. And now he just gets a little bit longer to enjoy the wisdom of the book. Does that make sense? That's another form of animating on the stage. But then if I don't like how the lights go in and out right there, then I can edit that. So maybe move this one back to here.
and just extend the glowing a little bit by stacking those frames. Let's output the GIF again. So you can keep tweaking it this way. Keep tweaking it. Oh, well, something weird happened because the book jumps. Why is the book jumping? It's this one. So if I want to delete it, I can simply do that by saying zero in the delay, and then it will just skip that frame. No, it didn't skip it. What is it doing? I think I want to move it here. There. Okay, let's try that. Put it back to 20. Good. All right. So all I did by playing with the frames and by making some duplicates was extend the time that the, uh, the wisdom thing happens. So if I'm happy with that, then I'm going to save the GIF. And to do that, I simply right click and say save image as, and now it will be a GIF file with the animation script in it, but I have to type my name again. Assignment three. Final animation. GIF. It is not finalized until you've saved it to your desktop. And then I'm going to move these animation test files into my assignment folder, and I'm going to mark this GIF orange, and I'm going to test it. And the way to test a GIF, this was my, my uh, test GIF at the beginning of class. You open it with a web browser. I use Safari because I don't use it for anything else. That's what I had at the beginning of class. This is my new one. So open with Safari. And that moment of wisdom lasts a little bit longer. And then you have that nice set to reset at the end. And there's only one thing that really bugs me. And that's how the eyes flip right there and then immediately flip back. I'm okay with it. But that's why I have the stage file, the, you know, I can go back and I can tweak those frames and the assets. So let's put that up to the assignment. I now have my second component. Drag and drop it in. It's my second requirement. And I'm going to shrink it to just be a little bit smaller than full size. Done. Now my third requirement is a refined storyboard, which shows the animation as basically a comic book page. So requirement three, and this is a layout, is called a refined storyboard. And just like it shows up in the assignment, this is going to be 30 inches wide for everybody by 40 inches tall at 100 pixels per inch. And that is good enough to be print resolution for about an 11 by 